Hi, my name is Rohit Ganguly, and I'm a product manager here at Microsoft. I hope you're enjoying Microsoft Build so far, and thanks for stopping by today's session. Today, we'll introduce the new Microsoft AI chat protocol and talk about how using it can make building user-facing, intelligent applications with JavaScript to breeze. In terms of what we'll cover in this session, I'll give a high-level overview of how AI chat applications are designed today, introduce the AI chat protocol, talk about the AI chat protocol SDK, give a short demo, and then close. To begin, I'd like to start by giving a high-level overview of what AI chat applications look like today. Please note that this is a very simplified diagram that focuses on the key pieces of an AI chat application, and it's designed to abstract away any implementation level details that might look different depending on what your product looks like and what the infrastructure is underneath. We have three key pieces in this diagram. From left to right, we first have the client or edge device that will be running a web application in this example, since we're talking about building JavaScript applications. This can also apply to mobile devices running an application using React Native with JavaScript. In the middle, we have an endpoint that the application on the client side will consume. Since we're dealing with a more involved backend, we can call this a middle tier endpoint, as it sits in between the client and the rest of their backend. Lastly, we have your AI infrastructure, which could simply be using an SDK to generate a response, or it can be something with orchestration or extra steps. In this example, we have an Azure OpenAI service running a model that's orchestrated with LangChain. The job to be done for the left side of the diagram can be described as the client-side consumption or front-end story, as the job of the developer on this side is to ensure that the user can receive the output of the AI backend with a good user experience. The right side of the diagram focuses on the AI backend, which includes the inference, orchestration, fine-tuning, retrieval, deployment, and monitoring of your AI models. Again, this is a very simplified view, but we've identified two key jobs to be done in this area. One to build high-quality, user-facing applications, and one to ensure that your AI backend service is provided to consume by either internal or external developers. Each side of this diagram represents an area to build for, and importantly, an area that, that's distinct. If you're building this all from scratch, you're going to have to integrate a lot of moving pieces, which can lead to more focus on getting your infrastructure to play nicely, as opposed to spending time writing business critical code. With regards to the AI backend, or the right part of this diagram, we've found that there's lots of existing guidance in the industry, such as libraries for model inference, UIs and tool chains for orchestration, guidance for hosting AI backends in the cloud, and even tools to handle language model response types via type chat or similar. We see a similar opportunity to provide consistent way of consuming AI backends from a client device and defining what that looks like on the middle tier endpoint for your application, giving guidance to the left side of the diagram. For a quick example of how this all pieces together, the user would first send a message to the middle tier endpoint. The endpoint handles the call to your AI infrastructure, which generates a response that the endpoint handles and sends back to the user. When it comes to consuming AI backends in your chat applications, we see several challenges. First, there's unclear best practices on what that story looks like for developers. This leads to a lack of interoperability. In other words, this means that your AI backend consumption will be very specific and not necessarily the same for other client-side applications or other AI backends. We see this issue come up in the definition of middle tier endpoints for AI backends, and this leads to a lot of friction when using different model schemas such as an open AI or a hugging face model. To counteract this and be more interoperable, developers often write large amounts of glue code that's designed to make these applications work with a variety of AI backend architectures. Lastly, with a generative text experience for your users, the expectation is that you incorporate some sort of streaming to your front end to have responses appear in live time, which can be a big issue and again, take you away from writing business critical code. We see all of these as large challenges for developers today, which is why we've developed the AI chat protocol API spec. The AI chat protocol API spec is an open source, cloud and language agnostic API contract. It's designed to be a standard interface for AI endpoint consumption and also evaluation, meaning that if your middle tier endpoint adheres to this API spec, you can consistently and easily consume and run evaluations on your AI backends with no extra cost. As a result, it's designed with interoperability in mind. Even better, it's already adopted by several Azure samples with active adoption efforts across more of our products at Microsoft. With that, today I'm thrilled to announce the public preview of the Microsoft AI Chat Protocol SDK. We're published on NPM for JavaScript and TypeScript, we're open source on GitHub, and we have end-to-end -end samples for your intelligent apps. You can learn more at aka.ms slash AI chat. The AI chat protocol SDK is an open source JavaScript and TypeScript library for easily consuming AI backends. 
It comes with all of the core functionality you may be familiar with through our other SDKs, such as HTTP client lifecycle management, logging, tracing, and auth. With the SDK, as long as your middle tier endpoint adheres to the AI chat protocol API spec, you get support for streaming responses right out of the box. We're thrilled to be publishing this library alongside first class front end support with our intelligent app references. Again, you can take a look at aka.ms slash AI chat. We'll have all the links you need to get started at the end as well. Let's now revisit our earlier example with the AI chat protocol. I've grayed out the right side of the image as now we're focused purely on the client side consumption job to be done on the front end. We first ensure our middle tier endpoint adheres to the AI chat protocol API spec, giving us a consistent way of communicating with AI backends and consuming their responses. Once we have the middle tier following the API spec, we can then update our web application to use the AI chat protocol SDK. With these two pieces in place, we can now enjoy seamless streaming, HTTP, auth, logging, and more, making the client-side consumptions process much simpler and leaving you with more time to focus on mission-critical code. Going back to the right side of the diagram, it can now look like whatever we want with whatever tools we want. This means that, for example, we can use Azure OpenAI Service, Llama, or any other models offered through Azure AI Models as a Service and we can combine that with Langchain or Semantic Kernel and so much more. Let's now jump into some basics. The core concepts of the way we've designed the AI chat protocol SDK might look familiar to you if you're familiar with some of our other libraries such as the Azure SDKs. First, you can install the library via NPM via at Microsoft slash AI dash chat dash protocol. Once you have the package installed, you can then instantiate a client to perform all of your operations and configurations through one object. The AI chat protocol features both synchronous and stream completions, giving you easy ways to incorporate generative AI output into your front ends. Now that we've covered the basics of getting started, let's jump into a quick demo. All right, so we're in VS Code now, and this is a very quick demo of the AI chat protocol SDK. This sample uses a React front end with a .NET back end, and the back end uses Semantic Kernel and Azure OpenAI service for orchestration and deployment of models. We want to emphasize that it doesn't matter what your backend looks like, as long as your middle tier endpoint adheres to the AI chat protocol API spec, you get all of the streaming goodies for your front end out of the box. In the package.json file, you can see that we take a dependency on the AI chat protocol SDK. The chatwindow.tsx file is where all of the logic for our application lives on the front end. On line seven, we instantiate a new AI chat protocol client by passing in the endpoint API slash chat. And since I'm developing locally, I also allow insecure connections via HTTP. However, we don't recommend this for production scenarios. The next place to take a look at is on line 13, where we have the handle send function, which takes in the message that the user sends as a string. We then create it as a AI chat message using the, the message that the user sent and setting it as the role from the user. We then prepare the response from the assistant. The main method to, to take a look at here is get stream completions, which passes in the messages being sent and then also the session state. That returns us an object we can iterate over and then we can update the session state and the content as they come in. This makes your logic on the front end really easy for streaming UI. This is all it takes. The rest of the logic here essentially describes uh, how the UI will be generated on the front end. Taking a really quick look at our back end, this is our middle tier definition in .NET. We have two key endpoints exposed, one for synchronous message handling and one for streamed message handling. Both of them look about the same, where we get the session from semantic kernel and we generate a response. The key thing here is that we've abstracted away both of these steps. If you want to add some more or customize it to your heart's intent, you can feel free to, as long as it adheres to the API spec. The key thing for our streamed messages is that our content type is a new line delimited JSON. Once you have that, you can easily stream your data back to the front end, and you get all of our goodies on the front end for rendering your logic easily. So I've run the sample in the back end directory, and now I can ask it questions. I'm going to ask something like, let's see, tell me a story about Jupiter. And now you can see we'll get streamed responses back to the front end. It says, would I like to hear about a specific aspect of Jupiter? Sure. Tell it as a poem. And you can see the UI is updating in real time as we're getting streamed responses to our front end. Write a goodbye 
message for the audience watching this demo. Yeah, thanks all for spending time and learning about Jupiter. We hope you use this. In conclusion, the AI Chat Protocol SDK is now live and we welcome you to try it out. Since we're in public preview, any issues or feedback on our GitHub would be greatly appreciated. And if you want to support the project, a star would also be appreciated. We're available on GitHub at aka.ms slash AI chat. The API spec is also on GitHub at aka.ms slash chat protocol. And lastly, if you want to check out the evaluations, that's aka.ms slash azai slash eval. Thanks so much for tuning into this session, and I hope you have a great build.